Uh, so, classifying chemical reactions. There's officially another chemical reaction on this list, which I'll go ahead and string down there at the bottom. We get our combustion reactions. And we look at a combustion reaction, we're taking CXHY plus O2, and it makes CO2 and water. Okay, so you are responsible for all of these chemical reactions and kind of finding them. You did watch a video on it. Do you understand what this slide is attempting to show? Yes. Cool. All right. There was a majority of yeses. If you're one of the people that is a no, definitely talk to me about it to make sure. Okay. These are the basic components of how we put together these reactions. Okay. So when we look at a combination reaction, believe in the video, we addressed at least the first one. Did you look at that in the video? Magnesium reacts to oxygen gas. Yeah? Okay, so we'll skip that example. Sulfur solid reacts with oxygen gas to produce sulfur dioxide. Okay, so what we can do here is acknowledge, number one, that this is a combination reaction. The English language may not help us out with that. That may not be inherently obvious. But if we use our nomenclature skills, we should be able to rewrite it into a chemical equation that matches the format on that slide that summarized all our chemical reactions. Right? So for instance, the symbol for sulfur, S, -S. S the symbol for solid, That's lowercase, lowercase s in parentheses afterwards, reacts with plus oxygen gas, Why'd you say O2? Oxygen is one of those diatomics. You need to know that it's written as O2. To produce is our arrow, sulfur dioxide gas. S SO2. SO2. Not S2O. That would be incorrect. Okay. What phase is the SO2? I think it's a gas, isn't it? I kind of agree with that. I think it's a gas. Right? What did you be expected to know the phase? No. Okay. If I wanted you to know the phase, it would say gas there. When it comes to the combination reaction, I don't expect you to predict the phase. Okay? So when you look at this, you should recognize it's a combination because I'm taking two elements and I smash them together to make one thing. Okay? Or I'm taking two things and I make one thing out of it. Okay. Is this equation balanced? Yes. Yes, so that worked out kind of nicely as well. Um, what is the meaning of the green two? That green two, yep, that subscript, the green two. What is the meaning of that two? So we got a bunch of answers came out. I, I heard how many oxygens. Okay, I heard how many atoms. I heard how many elements. Let's put it all together. What is the meaning of that green two? Okay, so another definition. Let's put it all together. What is the meaning of that two? How many oxygen atoms are in the oxygen molecule? Right? We also have a red 2. Does that mean the same thing? No. But it's subscript. It's immediately after an oxygen. Why does it mean something different? It's combined with another atom. It's combined with something else. This 2 still means there are two oxygen atoms, but they're not two oxygen atoms in O2. These are two oxygen atoms in SO2. Okay? And while you look at that and might say, well, those mean the same things, they don't. They mean inherently different things. Okay? The symbol appears to be the same on both sides, but they have different meanings behind them. 
And that subtle differentiation becomes huge when we try to balance equations and manipulate equations. Okay, so I just want to point that out so you're aware of it so that when it does come up and haunt you, we can acknowledge it and fix it then. Make sense? Makes sense. Okay. When we look at this, I expect you to be able to do this whole thing. If I asked you to provide the chemical equation from that statement, you should be able to write it. Okay. If I asked you what type of chemical reaction is sulfur oxide reaction, sulfur reacting with oxygen, yada, 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 you should be able to tell me that's a combination reaction. Okay? Kind of make sense? Lithium metal reacts with bromine gas to produce. So how do we do this one? What does it mean when we say lithium? What does it mean when we say metal? When would it mean liquid? If it's mercury. Remember, we have phase information embedded on our periodic table. So lithium as a solid reacts with plus bromine gas, Br2 gas. Why Br2? Because it's diatomic to produce arrow, what's it gonna produce? Pause, are you responsible for knowing what it produces? No, you said no, you went against the grain, why? I honestly don't remember if I told you this or not, so that's why I'm asking. You remember that you shouldn't know it because I said you shouldn't know it? Yeah. Okay, good. That's what I was hoping because that's what I was thinking. I just haven't seen the video in a while. Why am I not responsible for knowing that? Nope, there actually is enough information there to predict this one, believe it or not. You are not responsible for predicting combination reactions. That's it. Okay, you don't have to do it. Okay, in this case, it is an example that you could go through and theoretically predict. Most combination reactions are not something that's easy for you to predict, so you're not responsible for them. Okay, I just happen to pick an example that you could theoretically predict so that we could work through it in class. Okay, but you are ultimately not responsible for it. Why can you predict this one? There's only two atoms, okay? So if I'm gonna do a combination, I'm gonna make lithium with the bromine, right? Okay, and we, because there's two atoms, we just do that. What do you mean you gotta balance them? Why would people put a two there? Because there's a two over there. Why is that two there? Because it's how many bromines are in diatomic bromine. Do I have diatomic bromine anymore? No. So why would I put a 2 there? That's how many bromines I would need to balance lithium. Is that 2 true? To figure that out, what would we have to do? What is the charge on lithium? What is the charge on bromide? How many bromides do I need to balance out lithium? One. That two is not valid. Okay. There's another question that we'll follow up with here in a second, and you're right. Okay. So just because a number shows up doesn't mean it should show up on the right-hand side. In the previous case, the two from our oxygen translated across. Why? Because that was the name of each of those individual compounds. They were both required two oxygens. I can't do that here. Okay? The subscripts don't transfer necessarily. Okay? The subscripts are what make the compound. You're able to predict this one because you know the charge on bromide. How do you know the charge on bromide? I'll sort of accept the periodic table. You're supposed to know it. I told you you needed to know it. How do you know the charge on lithium? I also told you you're supposed to know it. Both of those elements are things you can predict from the periodic table because we talked about the patterns you could come up with to get them. Right? 
So because of that, you're able to predict this. Most combination reactions involve ions that you don't know the charges on, which mean you wouldn't be able to properly balance them. Okay, make sense? Yes. Okay. One of the next responses that usually comes out of drawing an equation like this would then be, well, but, but, but it's not balanced. But, but I don't care. Wasn't asking that. I just wanted what's the overall equation. There's the overall equation. Is the overall equation balanced? No, so now what can I do? Now I can balance it. And to go through and balance, I would say? How many lithiums on the left? One on the right? One. How many bromines on the left? Two on the right? One. That's not balanced. I put a 2 in front so that now I have two bromines. I've changed a number, which means I need to go back through and check again. How many lithiums? One on the left and two on the right. What do I do? Put a 2 here. Now I have two lithiums. How many bromines on the right? Two. And on the left? Two. So the bromines balance. I changed a number, so what do I do? I go back and I check it again. Lithium's on the right. Two. On the left. Two. Bromines. Two. two and two. Since I've now gone through and checked and verified, everything's balanced and I'm good. Yeah? No, check again. Okay. Theoretically, I should continue to check again. I'm not going to do it again because I'm, I'm already sick enough with myself. I don't, I don't need to keep getting irritated. Okay? Make sense? Yes. Just to throw it out there, what could I then ask about this? I, if I gave you this initial equation, let's say this equation, I could ask for you to balance the chemical reaction, and you could provide the chemical equation. Okay? Or I could say lithium metal reacts with bromine gas to produce, and then five multiple choice answers, all showing the correct or variations on the theme of how we would write out that chemical equation. Do you want to see a variation on that theme? Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's go up. Let's see if I can come up with five wrong or four wrong answers. I really don't like phases, so I'm not including them. running out of options. Oh, there we go. Let's do that. Okay. We've got five possible answers up there. I could ask which of these correctly represents the, the question stated. Right here, I'm not even asking you to predict what the product, uh, technically, I'm, I've screwed myself, because yes, you would have to predict what the product is, right? Okay. But you could go through and evaluate these and decide which of those best represents that equation. Notice they all have some commonalities between them. It's a question of understanding the meaning of each of those numbers and places. Everybody get that? Okay. So I could provide a question that way. I could also provide, can I erase all of the black stuff? Yeah. Sometimes it bothers me to see stuff that's really wrong. Right. If you've ever been to the tutoring center when I'm there, you've probably recognized that. I start eavesdropping and comment on wrong things. Okay. So when we go through and look at this, I could give you the equation Right, and say, I want to know the sum of the coefficients for the balanced equation. Guess what one of the answers will be? Five. five. Why'd you say five? Because that's the correct answer. Good. Okay, so yes, that's a valid answer. What else? Six. Four. 
I don't, I'm not quite sure where you're getting four from, but I would do three. Okay. Maybe even a two. I probably wouldn't throw in one. And since I'm out of space, we'll put E up there. And get six. Why would I put in three? One, two, three. Okay. If we looked at the correctly balanced equation, two and two, I know where you got four now. Why would I put in four? Two plus two is four. That's true. What did you not add in? The coefficient of the one off of our bromine. Okay. So when we're talking about the sum of the coefficients, the coefficient is the number in front of every single one of our elements or our compounds. In this case, we see two obvious twos, but what's in that giant empty black box? There's an implied one. You have to add that into the total. Okay. I could also ask, what is the coefficient on lithium bromide? It's two. Okay. So there's a variety of ways I can get at you evaluating the proper balanced equation without actually having to show any work for balancing the equation. Okay, so balancing equations, I won't ask to see work for because a lot of people can internalize those balancing aspects. Kind of make sense? Okay. Do you want some nomenclature practice? <laughs> kind of some yeses. So let's go through and do it. I'll give you four minutes. <laughs> what the heck is wrong with what I wrote? What that that's the What's the E? What are you talking about? <laughs> You are awful people. <laughs> I did. This is going to slow me down. This doesn't count. <laughs> talk about that. I'm trying to not lose focus. So much for being, being neat now. So when we go through and put these together, the first one is cadmium cyanide. You'll notice I did not use Roman numerals. The only time we use Roman numerals, transition elements, fair enough. Not officially true, but OK. Cadmium is a transition element. So that rule doesn't work. Okay, that rule that you've been taught is usually, if it is a transition element, you will have to specify the charge. There are some metals over here that you would have to specify the charge on that aren't transition elements. 
There are also some transition elements you're not required to specify the charge on. Zinc, cadmium, and silver. Okay? So uh, that statement of transition elements needing to specify the charge is very, very, very wishy-washy. Okay? It's like saying, well, usually the sky is blue. It's not blue right now. Okay? It's wet and gray and stuff has fallen on me. Okay? It's not always true. So be careful with those kind of bulk statements. Okay, because cadmium is one I'm required to know the charge on, I don't have to specify it. Tricarbon dioxide for C3O2 okay, should be a straightforward one. The molecular, the binary molecular ones usually are. That's where we're using our Greek prefixes. We know we're looking at molecular because they're both nonmetals. We move to chromium oxide. We see the Roman numeral pop up. Why does the Roman numeral pop up? It's the charge. I'm not required to know the charge on chromium. Why are we not required to know the charge? Because it changes. That's why you're being asked to memorize charges, is because they don't change. When they do change, we have to specify it, and it doesn't make any sense to memorize multiple charge states. Okay? So, symbol chromium and oxygen. Notice I wrote the charges immediately underneath. A lot of people will write it above. I understand why you want to do that, because that's where we would specify charge, in the upper right-hand corner. The problem with doing that, can I erase everything above? Yeah. The problem with doing that, for the like three of you that are in my lab class, is if you write this, even if I now go through and put the, what, two and three down here, you can get marked as wrong. Because the way that is written makes it look like this compound has a minus 2 charge. No, it doesn't. It's a neutral charge. Why is that minus 2 there? That's your work so that you know oxygen is a minus 2. Okay? So if you want to do that as part of your work, that's okay. That's cool. Don't box that in as a final answer. What you should do is recognize that, oh my gosh. <laughs> that that now needs to get boxed as a final answer. And I know that's a circle or oval. Okay? Does that make sense? Are you laughing at box versus circle and oval? Yeah? Okay. That needs to get written in. Okay? If you show those charges up there, don't say that's an official answer, particularly if you move into 151. Okay? Or potentially even for your lab class because you have a different instructor. For the lecture, it doesn't matter because in the lecture, you'll see it as multiple choice, in which case none of the answers will have that show up as a multiple choice. Does that make sense? Okay. As far as deciding what numbers should be for the chromium and the oxygen, what I showed out was the big long math way that I recommend you go through and do and get used to that system and that formula uh, because we will see that again uh, probably in the video that you're watching this coming weekend. Okay. The other way to do it, or at least one other way to do it that I'm still somewhat okay with, get back to this, is looking at those two charges and saying, what is the lowest common multiple between three and two? Somebody has to know bath better than me. Is it really the lowest common multiple? Is that the word I'm supposed to be using? <coughs> no, no, never mind, just kidding. It is multiple? Okay, because I screw it up and I keep forgetting to ask some math people. So the lowest common multiple between 3 and 2. What is the lowest common multiple? 6. six. How do I make a 3 into a 6? Multiply by 2. How do I make a 2 a 6? Multiply by 3. There it is. Okay. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is balance out those charges. Okay. So another way that we could look at this to make the oxygen green is I have chromium floating around with a plus three charge. So I've shown a couple people this. One, two, three. There's chromium, ta-da! Oxygen floating around with a negative two charge. These need to balance out to have the proper formula. So if I went through the plus cancels, plus cancels. I had left over with a plus, so what do I need? I need another oxygen. Plus cancels the minus, but now I have another negative, so I need another chromium. So what happens? Plus cancels the minus, but now 
I need another negative. Now what happens? Now all the pluses and minuses cancel out. How many chromiums did I use? Two. How many oxygens did I use? Three. Right? That's ultimately all that's happening is we're just trying to balance the charge. Bunch of different ways that you could look at, visualize it, and see it, but ultimately that's what we're trying to do. Make sense? Okay. Dinitrogen tetroxide hopefully is a straightforward one. Okay. Questions about what's up there? Yes? Could you do one more example similar to the chromium 3 oxide? Sure. Uh, so, name to formula or formula to name? Uh, the name to formula. You don't need to do that. I just want to write one down. Titanium 4 oxide. I'll give you 30 seconds. <laughs> Breathe, it's not that bad. See, and I even heard people put down their pencils. See, it wasn't that bad. Titanium. TI, oxide. Oh, what is the charge on the titanium? What is the charge on the oxide? Negative two. For those of you that did the crossover, probably got something like this. And that would be wrong. This is why we don't do the crossover. It just comes in as TiO2. Okay. How do we do that? Let's just do the simplest one. What is the lowest common multiple between 4 and 2? 4. How do I make a 4 a 4? I just need a 1. How do I make a 2 a 4? 2. There's your formula, TiO2. The oxide just means you have a minus 2. It doesn't mean how many oxygens are present. Uh, eight, nine, uh, I was considering doing another example like that, so I'll do that in just a second. Uh, so what did you have? It's so easy to do that crossover. I don't know that it's like TI2O4 and So if you do the crossover, there is kind of a, a catch that I try to not tell people about so you don't use the crossover, and I just point out the failures. <laughs> you just have to reduce it. So if you did Ti2O4, you would reduce it to TiO2. Okay. So a question came out about the 8s and the 8s, which is fine. Okay. When we look at this, uh, we had oxide. Any idea what stands out or what should jump out of the page at you? The D in oxide. That should immediately be screaming at you. And you're like, why would that be screaming at you? Because well, I just highlighted it in purple. <laughs> Okay. That D means something in particular. Okay. Most of the time. Most of the time. It means this is a binary ionic compound. Okay. What does bi mean? Two. So we're looking at two elements. So this would be titanium, Ti, and the symbol for oxide would then just be O. Two elements. So now we look titanium for sulfate. What changes? What jumps out of the page at you? The T in this. Okay? That T and I've, I've never actually connected these two and it is totally true. T for ternary. I just assumed it wasn't binary. Okay, T for ternary. That means when we're looking at the elements that go into this, we need more than two elements. So titanium and then sulfate. Okay, the sulf sounds like sulfur. sulfur. 
So that's a good first hint, but since we know it's a T, it's ternary, it can't be just titanium and sulfur. There has to be another element. Okay? If that's all I know, I've probably eliminated an answer choice. Okay? However, you should know more than that because I told you to memorize sulfate, okay? which is SO4. And what is the charge on sulfate? Negative. A negative 2 titanium a plus 4, lowest common multiples, 4, so I get titanium sulfate, TiSO4, 2. So TiSO42. I need the parentheses to specify. Yes? If I wanted to specify just the charge on the molecule, all I got to do is write it in the upper right-hand corner. As long as there isn't a massive space there, I know that's a pretty big space, but as long as there isn't a massive space there, it's assumed they're connected. The charge on the whole thing would be specified in the upper right-hand corner. Because right now we're looking at nomenclature, we assume everything is neutral, nothing's written there. If I now ask, provide the formula for sulfate, what would I be asking you to write? Minus two. minus two. Because the charge on sulfate is a minus two, you now have to specify it. Okay. If I ask just for sulfate. Does that make sense? Okay. So those of you who have lab today, have fun. You get to do eight pages of that for the next three hours. Okay. So more practice. Because you all watched the reaction video, you guys seem to be on top of that. Determine the reaction type and predict the product and balance the reaction if you are required to do so. If you got questions, raise your hand. Okay. Determining the reaction type, are you responsible for knowing that? No. Yes. <laughs> you are absolutely responsible for knowing the reaction type for all six types of reactions. Those six types of reactions are combination, single replacement, double replacement, decomposition, combustion, and neutralization. So when you look at these categories, you should be trying to match them up to those different systems. You'll notice the information is provided in different fashions but you should still be able to match them to the patterns that were provided on that earlier slide. That you were all like, yep, totally get it. Just for the record, I remembered that. You said that was fine. Okay. Me too, it's okay. First one is a combustion. It's not a combination because you end with two things. The second one, lithium metal reacts with bromine gas to produce. Okay. It's written out in English, so that might confuse you. So what you could go through and do is say, I'm taking lithium plus Br2 to produce. That really only fits the combination reaction. Okay. And looking at the patterns, you will see there is some overlaps between them. Part of doing this practice is trying to figure that out. The next one. Okay. Decomposition. We don't even need to write it out because it says decompose. So we're looking at a decomposition. Aqueous sodium chloride reacts with aqueous lithium nitrate. Again, the English language could be messing with us. Sodium chloride. Whoa, what the? Sorry, my screen just did weird stuff. Did that screen do weird stuff? Yeah, it did. Oh, cool. Sodium chloride. Lithium nitrate. This is a double displacement works or a double replacement. Why does that sound weird to me? 
Double, no, that's right, double replacement. Oh, okay. okay. The next one. I haven't gotten even yet to the questions following this, predicting products or balancing the reactions. All we're trying to do is identify the class. Once we've got the class, then we can try and deal with the rest. The next one, zinc plus lead sulfate. This is a single replacement. That says replacement, for those of you that were wondering. Sulfur solid reacts with oxygen gas to produce sulfur dioxide. This was our combination. Last one also fits our single replacement. I've always heard it replacement. I've heard a couple people start to say displacement. It's, I guess it really depends on how you want to reference the English language around the reaction itself. That's really... No, I haven't heard that one. Sorry. So of these, how many of them are you required to predict products for? You are required to predict products for a combustion reaction. Do you need to do it for this one? It's already done. Are you required to predict products for a combination? No. Decomposition? Double replacement? Yes. Single replacement? Yes. Yes. Combination? No. no. Single replacement? Yes. yes. So when we go through and look at these, you're required to predict products for four of them, one of which already had the products outlined. Okay? If you aren't required to predict the products for the combination or the decomposition or that combination, are you going to be able to balance the reaction? No, which means you're done with those three questions. That was it. That's all you really had to do. Right? Well, the last one I gave you the product. but So let's clear up some space in there because we don't need to predict those. And really, I needed the space for the top one. Top one is a tricky one to balance. If we go through and look at this, carbon on the left. Right? Two. Try again. One. One needs to be four. Hydrogen? Ten. Ten and? Two. two. How do I make a two a ten? Five. Multiply by five. Oxygens? Two. two. Thirteen. Thirteen. But I heard someone say five. There's two from the CO2. There's eight CO, or sorry, four CO2s, which means eight from the CO2 plus five from the water, which gets me 13. How do I get two and 13 to equal each other? What can I multiply the two by to get 13? Okay, six and a half. And a lot of people laughed, or at least a couple people did. That's actually pretty solid. That's okay. Believe it or not, six and a half is a pretty solid answer. Okay. Why would you laugh at six and a half? When we go through to balance an equation, they have to be whole numbers. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite six and a half as the fraction 13 over 2. Okay. It needs to be a whole number. How do I make 13 over 2 a whole number? Multiply by 2. But if I multiply that one by 2, what do I have to do to all the others? Seriously, that couldn't possibly have worked. Ooh, it didn't. That's a nice challenge. And then better of. Carbon. How many carbons do we have? Eight. How many carbons do we have? I said oxygen, didn't I? I meant carbon on the right-hand side of the equation. Eight. How many hydrogens on the left? Hydrogens on the right. 
How many oxygens on the left? 13 times 2, which is 26. How many oxygens on the right? 2 plus that 8 gets me 16 plus another 10 gets me holy mother of God it actually worked six and a half awesome answer okay you may have a hard time with that I completely agree it's probably one of the most advanced kind of balancing things that you will encounter this semester is dealing with combustion reactions that don't line up perfectly. You can deal with this weird half thing, or what you can go through and do is highlight where we had that issue, which means I'm going to attempt to backtrack this. Ignore that I crossed out those numbers. When we backtrack out to our oxygen, our oxygen was the problem one. We had two on the left, and we had 13 on the right. Okay. So the problem was I could not get this 2 to equal 13. So what I can do is take a look at where that 2 is coming from. It's coming from the subscript. Multiply everything by that subscript. So this jumps up to be 2. This would jump up to be 8. This would jump up to be 10. And now attempt to balance the oxygens. You'll get the same thing. You'll get it out to be 13. There's no happy way that I've seen to do this. The fraction way when I saw it was like, oh, that's awesome, that's easy. And I've tried that fraction way with lots of people. And for those of you being like, that was freaking hard. I have no idea what you just did. That was some voodoo magic. That tends to be the kind of natural response to that. I, I've not seen a cleaner way to do it. So if it's a fraction on an oxygen or, or any element, you would have to double everything? And it's not double. It's recognizing what that subscript is. That subscript is most commonly a 2 because we're looking at diatomic elements. Yeah. Okay, so for this class, you would see it show up as diatomic, and you would see it show up in a combustion reaction. Okay? At most, you'd see one question like that on an exam. All right. Because, yeah, that, it's just tricky to balance. I don't think it's, it's worth pushing the mathematics on it. Okay? We move down to the double replacements and the single replacements. Are you expected to predict those products? Yes. Okay. So let's take a look at the double replacement. What are our products? Sodium nitrate and lithium chloride. To do the full double replacement, we'd have to make sure that we predicted the products correctly. What is the charge on sodium? A plus one. The charge on nitrate? Negative one. A negative one. Is the formula sodium nitrate correct? Yeah. Yes. What is the charge on lithium? A plus one. What is the charge on chloride? A minus one. Did we balance that correctly? Yes. yes. Once we know our formulas are correct in our products, now we could attempt to go through and balance the equation. What are we going to find in this case? It's already balanced. So we could say the sum of the coefficients is four. Okay. The single replacements, similar concept. We're exchanging things. The double replacement, it says double replacement, so we're switching two things. Okay. Which two is kind of up to you? Most people tend to trigger off the metals. Sodium is a metal, lithium is a metal. So if I'm going to do a double replacement, I'm going to exchange both metals. The result is I end up with sodium with the nitrate, and I'd end up with the lithium with the chloride. What if you'd written lithium chloride plus sodium nitrate? It's the same thing. One plus three is four. Three plus one? Four. The order doesn't matter. Okay. The single replacements. Okay. In the case of the double replacement, we exchanged and we had two kind of pieces swap out. The single replacements, single you're only swapping out one. So we'll take our metals again, most commonly, and we'll exchange those pieces. Okay? So our products for that first single replacement comes in as zinc sulfate and lead. What is the charge on the zinc? Plus two. 
a plus two. You know that because I told you to memorize that. What is the charge on sulfate? A minus two. Is that formula correct? Yes. What is the charge on the lead? Actually kind of a trick question with our single replacements. The charge on that lead is zero. We'll talk about that in a little bit. We move to the single replacement down below and we try and exchange that one. We'd get the gold with the sulfate and we'd get the copper by itself. What is the charge on gold? Zero. In gold sulfate. Is gold one you're required to know the charge on? No. no. So even if I know the charge on sulfate is a minus two, how many golds do I need to balance out the sulfate? I literally don't know. That's called a crap question. Okay? Because you don't have that context, you don't know how to balance that out appropriately. Okay? And believe it or not, you will encounter those, particularly with the single replacements. In the single replacements, if you are not required to know that charge, look somewhere else, i.e. the lab after spring break, horrible timing and sequencing, but that's the way it works. Okay? Or assume it's the same as the other ion. What was the charge on the copper to begin with? A plus two. How do I know the copper was a plus two? It has to balance out the sulfate. It has to balance out the sulfate. Okay? Which means I'm going to make the assumption that the gold was a plus two. Why would I make that assumption? It makes balancing the whole system a hell of a lot easier. That's why I'm making the assumption. Okay? Horrible assumption? Yes, absolutely. It's dumb, and the question shouldn't have been asked. So are you done then? Is that equation balanced? Yeah. Wouldn't you need yeah. What's, What's up? Well, okay, then why would you need to do all the <clears throat> Which gets back to our lead. What is the charge on the lead in the product? Zero. zero. What is the charge on the copper in the product? <coughs> zero. It's also zero. Okay, when we run through the single replacement reaction, we're doing some fancy kind of crazy mathematics and stuff like that, which, yeah, yeah, I think we'll probably talk about. So we won't have to skip too much. The decompositions, if we're giving you some more information, you could go through and predict your decompositions, okay? Like this, sodium hydrogen carbonate decompose into, that looks really familiar. And I said you didn't need to know it. Why would you be asked to answer that question now? This question literally was on the slide just like the last one, and I said, you don't have to answer it. Now I'm telling you, you have to answer it. Is there more information given? Yes, that more information gives you the context that allows you to know what it breaks down into. Only because you have that more information would you be allowed to predict that. Does that make sense? Okay. I will leave that to you to play with because I want to get to the single replacements because these are a little bit more interesting. And I keep freaking forgetting to fix this. Ignore the letters up there. Zinc plus lead sulfate. If we were to look at a single replacement reaction, you are required to predict this product. So predictions are absolutely needed here. Okay. What we just went through and did it, we ended up with zinc, sulfate, and lead. Because we're required to know that zinc is a plus two, we know we have the proper formula with zinc sulfate. Part of the predictions is that you also need to know the phase. What is the phase on the zinc sulfate? What was it to begin with? Okay, our sulfate compound was aqueous, so aqueous. What is the phase on the lead? Solid. Okay. It does a full swap out, okay. which is kind of neat because what happens is we're going to see the formation of, set of lead, a solid forming in our reaction, which would be a good sign that it worked. Uh, I want more than it worked, but you got the right idea. It was, a chemical it was a chemical change. It was a chemical reaction because we saw a new phase form. Yeah. Does that mean that it's a byproduct of like electricity or something? 
if we go through and push this a bit further, right, we said the lead at the end didn't have a charge. Okay? Number one, it's not charge. It's actually oxidation state. This is the video you guys are going to watch this weekend. Have fun with that. Everybody enjoys it and thinks it's hilarious. Okay? If we take a look at the lead at the end, it has zero charge. What did it start with? Plus two. A plus two. How do I go from a plus two charge to a zero charge? What makes charge? The balance of electrons and protons in an element. Because the protons have not changed, because it's still lead, what had to change? The electrons. Lead had to gain two electrons. So when we're talking about these types of reactions, you had a good idea. Are we talking about electricity? We're talking about electricity if we wire this appropriately. If we don't wire it, it just runs on its own. We don't get electricity out of it. There is a transfer of electrons. Where did lead get those two electrons? Lead just gained two electrons. Where did it get those two electrons from? What happened to the zinc? It went from a zero to a plus two. It just lost two electrons. Where did its two electrons go? The to the lead. That's how the single replacement reaction works. We're transferring electrons from one atom to another. Okay? That transfer changes the physical properties of the substance because we've changed the chemicals. Okay? Where zinc ion, or sorry, lead ion versus lead metal. Those are different. Okay? If I throw lead ion at you, you might be, why are you getting me wet? If I throw a lead bar at you, you're probably going to get pissed and end up with a bruised face when it smacks you in the face. Those are entirely different phases and different physical properties because we've changed their chemical compositions. Okay? What chemical composition did I change? Two electrons. Those tiny things like a hair, if I rip two pieces of hair out of my head, it's like if I rip two pieces of hair out of my head and all of a sudden I became a different person. That's happening in chemistry. Okay? So you are expected to be able to predict these. You're also expected to be able to predict those phases, which you can just do by just saying, well, they swap the phases, and you don't have to stress about it. Okay? The next big challenge that comes out of this is not just predicting the product, but saying, should the reaction actually happen? Right? So I can draw it out and say, this is what would happen if I mix these. I'm going to buy this car when I win a million dollars. That doesn't mean tomorrow I'm going to go buy the car. I need the million dollars first. Right? That's what the chemical reaction shows. It's the plan if this works. How do we know if it works? You test it. But this is the lab, or the lecture, not the lab. We're in a room, not the lab room, right? Okay. How would you go through and test it? You wouldn't. You aren't wearing any of the safety equipment. So what has to happen? You have to interpret somebody else's tests. Here's somebody else's tests. Right now, it's totally obvious that this reaction occurs. Sure. Okay, cool. Then we don't have to discuss it because you already understand it. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, no, it is totally not obvious. We're looking at zinc versus lead. Are zinc and lead the only things on this table? No. 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 So let's just look at zinc and lead. Selective vision. Okay. This as a statement of decreasing activity. So the higher up on this, the more active we are. Okay? I'm going to get in so much trouble for this. If, if socially you were active, would you have more partners or less partners? <laughs> you would have more partners. The more active you are, the more things you want to be around. Zinc versus lead, which one wants to be around more things? 
Zinc, because it's higher on the activity series. Okay? Where is zinc with more things? All except right. It's over here. What side of the equation is that? Right. The product side of the equation. Yes, it is also the right side of the equation. Okay, it is our product side of the equation. The only way I get the products is if what happens? A reaction. a reaction occurs. Okay? What if you were less active? How many partners would you have? You'd have less. We look at our list. Lead is lower on our activity series, which means it wants less partners. Where is lead have less partners? Where does lead have less partners? I knew this example was going to get me in trouble. On the right-hand side of the equation. Does this reaction occur? Yes. Everything is driving towards a reaction happening. What we're using is that activity series to predict the reactivity of a reaction. What I want you to go through and do is predict these products, and I know those of you are like, but class is over, I'm giving you homework, more homework. <coughs> predict these products. In the first five minutes of Tuesday's class, I'm gonna expect you to tell me on a quiz which of those reactions actually occurred. All right, so one, two, three, four. It'll be in the first five minutes of class. Okay? And if you got questions about it, you'll feel free to talk to me after class. That's cool too. Okay? And we'll also start with kind of why that activity series is kind of cool.